that's the sound of unlimited free energy. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Oxygen Not Included. Today, we're gonna be trapping the sun and turning it into power. Welcome to Shinebug Sun 2.0. A while ago I made this video with Shinebugs here where I made my own sun inside the base. However, there's been some new ideas that have come to the surface since then. One of those ideas come from Unicorn Slayer over here, where he's using a very confined space for all of the Shinebugs to be inside of. And if I remember back to the video here, it was really about how many Shinebugs you can get into a single spot to get the most power out of those Shinebugs. Here's the other thing that we've been doing recently. We've been ranching fish like this, where we just have a fish over here on the right side, and then we stack up all in all of these like uh, pakus and goldfish or whatever else you have inside of here, and those essentially just live and then die off and hatch another one that replaces them. And that pretty much happens without any effort at all once you get them over here. So what if we can combine this idea here with shine bugs right over our solar panels? Hmm, let's see if it, let's see if it'll work. So here's my experiment. I have a grooming station inside of here uh, because we do need to have an enclosed area for a grooming station to be effective. And I think the other thing is I want these things to be tame, but I'm not 100% sure. So what I'm going to do is go is just going to copy this down and see if wild shine bugs will survive in a confined space like this. I'm using different materials. So I have a window tile here. The one on the left is diamond. And then I have airflow tiles over there on the right. All right, so there we have it. I put three shine bugs in each one. You can see that they're confined. They're not happy. So that means that they will not generate any extra babies. I don't so one all by itself. Nope, it's still confined. So what if I put the tiniest amount of water right here? Oh, well then it's not confined at all. <laughs> so if we brush just a little bit of water in each one of these spots. Ooh, look, the airflow tile doesn't like it. It won't stay there. And the shine bugs got out. Okay, it also looks like the light no longer passes through airflow tiles. Okay, let's see which one of these is more effective. If I go over to illumination, 1800 lux, 1800 lux, it doesn't matter. Okay, so now that I'm armed with some knowledge, let's go ahead and try to apply it over here and see what happens. So if I just brush just a little bit of, oops, not that much, just a little bit of water right there, right there and right there and right there. Perfect. So now, what I have up top here is I have a shine bug ranch where the critters can eat out of this. They'll get some really delicious phosphori. And then as they lay eggs, those eggs will be conveyed right down here into conveyor chutes. So the egg will just naturally populate this area. Now, because of the way that we kind of entomb them, what we really want this to be is as wide open as possible. So when they're down here, we should be able to stack a lot of these on top of each other. So let's go ahead and try to do that. So each one of these has three shine bugs in place. You see that they are happy and not confined. Okay, so now that these are tame here, you can see that their reproduction per cycle there is at 67%. So that's just like what we're seeing with the fish over here. You see how it's super happy? Now the real thing here is, is does this shine bug really consume that much phosphorite? Or is this something that I want to set up in the exact same way that I have over here, where I'm only feeding it one kilogram per cycle? Hmm. Okay, well, one of them just ate a thousand. Come on, little guy. Go over there. Go to the critter feeder. You can do it. Okay, so there's the first egg. Boom. And that's being delivered down here. Okay, so this one just ate. Okay, change per cycle is 40 kilocalories per cycle. However, every time they eat, is it 1,000? That's a fair bit different than what we have with the fish. Why? Why is that different? Why is that egg not dropping? Is that just not in the right spot? Does it actually need to be... Let's find out. Eh, yeah, needs to be one higher. Interesting. If I grab that, boom. That'll get shipped to the right spot. There we go. So that... Mm hmm. It's looking pretty good. That'll take five cycles to hatch, but the point is it should just keep building up more and more and more down there. At least that's the hope. Okay, so what I'm going to do just to test that theory, I'm going to go ahead and replace that with, you know, one, one spot over here to see if this one shine nymph that should be tame now when it hatches will just keep making more and more of itself. And this here should match what I'm doing over there because there we go. Well, hopefully the pathing here doesn't cause too many issues. You can see they can fly up and down. That's kind of annoying. Okay, so here's here's another idea of how I might be able to kind of cheat the conveyor chute. If I do this number, where I have a pneumatic door just like that, 
Then what will you do, game? Hmm? There goes the egg. Ah, ha ha, it dropped through the door. It dropped through the door. Genius! Sorry, Clay. I'm about to break your game again. <laughs> oh, oh, look at that. And then the egg. Boom. Now watch, watch what happens. If we were to put a little shine nymph down there or a sun bug or whatever. Bam, look at that. It's trapped and it can't move at all. But it's not confined because it's got the little water right there. <laughs> oh, and that makes it so easy to set up too. Because then all you do is you put a little bottle emptier right there. Just like that. You dump just a little bit of water in there and you mop up one spot. Problem solved. Boom. <sighs> this is going to be awesome. Okay, now all of these need to be hooked up to a critter sensor. That is set to seven, so if we go above that, then we sweep the eggs out. Otherwise, we leave the egg inside of here to rehatch. Uh, so they, you know, they grow up and give off more eggs. See right now, it's not true, but once the first egg shows up, it'll become true. <laughs> see, I know, I know you didn't see it, but there it was. It activated just for a moment, and boom, the egg came out. Perfect. Look at how many eggs are in that one spot. It goes off the screen. So much potential for power. Bam! More power. Hey, you wild shine bug, leave my solar panel alone. Go back over here. There you go. There you go. Don't be, don't be throwing off my results. How about you go up here and enjoy this thing? Yeah, that thing's cool, isn't it? <gasps> there it is. There it is. The first little sun nymph. Mm, look at the power. Okay, we're generating 6.84 watts. But you know what? I wasn't there before, now was it? This is going to scale up quickly. Yes. Oh, there's another. Mm. We're now up to 7.39 watts on each solar panel on cycle 1100. That's where the numbers begin. Look at that sun nymph. It doesn't even move around. It just hangs out there his entire life. Oh, bam, there's another one. 14.23 watts. Watch out. Well, listen to the little adorable snoring of the shine nymphs. Oh, and more are hatching. Look at this. Bam! 27.9 watts. And <laughs> more eggs just like dropping in all the time. Wow. And for the life of me, I cannot get this corner up here to work. Urgh! Stupid webcam. Okay. I need to buy a new webcam, okay? <sighs> this one's cool, but it's giving me too many problems. Oh, there we go. Somehow I fixed it. All right, I got five Shine Nymph babies over here. Ooh, that's good for 34.74 watts. Hmm, a little bit of splash damage over here. Bring that up to 9.62. Would you look at the Lux on that? Hmm. All right, I can see how this could potentially be better. If we were to put one right there and then like another one right here, the illumination from one of these Shine Nymphs might spread over to the other solar panel more. It's a little late for that right now, but this is ramping up fast. <laughs> woo woo! <laughs> oh, could you imagine how this is going to sound when you have like a thousand shine nymphs in your base? Every time you go to sleep, this is what you get to go to sleep to. And you know what? I think I could even collect the little egg shells off of this. Not that it's very much stuff, but let's find out. Oh, there we go. Once you go to an overlay, you can actually see what you're doing again. <laughs> well, might as well power it off of that, because why not? <laughs> uh, eggshell. There you go. Boom. Yes, you can, because it's a pneumatic door. Dude. Dude. Why didn't, why didn't, why didn't you drop out? <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, so there's a shine bug here. It's glum, but its reproduction is 7% per cycle. Yes! Yes! You know what that means, right? How long does it live? It, leaves, it lives to 25. So therefore, by age 13, even though it will be starving by then, which is changed per cycle, only eight calories per cycle. It may not even starve to death. It just may, may just have unlimited food. It consumes itself and makes more of itself. We're up to a cool 100 watts over here. 
Oh, and by the way, the fish farm up there. Ah, 107,000 calories. Delicious. Okay, so while this experiment is running up here, let me go ahead and try to figure out the best spacing between, uh, between shine boxes or shine farms. I don't know. We'll have to come up with a clever name for that one. Anyhow, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so if I have two solar panels right next to each other. Okay, so when I originally designed this, I put this directly above the power port right there. So it was right in line with that, right? So when I put a shine bug on there, you can see that I'm getting 6.84 over here and 0.56 over there on the right. So if I move that guy, then we can kind of get a next number. I should write this down. Okay, I moved it one tile to the right. I'm 6.6 .6 and I'm 1.35. Ooh, ooh, so yes, that did make a difference. Hmm. Okay, we'll move it one more over. There we go. I'm now 6.28 on the left. Ooh, and 1.67 on the right. Okay, so right when I'm over here, you can see the number on the left is 4.69. Okay, so this is interesting. The total amount of watts that we're getting out of here actually evens out after we move it just one off of center from where the power plug is. So everything from here to the right was the same for a total of 7.95 watts. All right, now let's do the same thing, but with two bugs. Okay, so both of these are producing 7.39. Now the interesting thing here is that as you move these bugs closer together, the light they're giving off will stack on top of each other, creating a brighter spot. So if we look up here, and in this arrangement here, you can see that over here on the left, we have 37,800 lux. Uh, and then we have a, a spot in the middle, which is 32,000. So it kind of depends on how many lux you have hitting, you know, the solar panels down there. Holy moly, look at how bright that is now. Okay, so it may not be possible to put the shine bugs right next to each other because then they... It would move back and forth, which might cause you to lag out quite a bit. But if we kind of do this number, then we get 7 watts on the left, 8.9 on the right. Oh, look at those interesting results. Okay, so pretty much when they were evenly spaced, right? One bug here, and then the same over there. We were generating 14.7 watts. And then as we moved it in a little bit closer to each other, that was 15.9 and 15.9. However... Once I moved this bug closer to that bug right there, just kind of like that, right in the middle, it jumped up a little bit to 16.4. So the bugs are stacking on top of each other. Okay, so now I need a per bug column over here. So, well, that's just going to be that divided by one. Oh, that's pretty easy. So what's interesting here is the amount of watts per bug. So we started off at 7.4 with just the one straight over the power and then jumped up to 7.95, right? The same number. And then, then again, it was 7.95, same sort of numbers as we added two bugs together. But it was in this arrangement here, we're actually getting more out of them, which is 8.2 watts per bug. So this three bug test will be kind of interesting. Okay, so this is arrangement number one. We have one bug over here on the left, one bug on the right, one bug near the middle. And that is less efficient. We're at 7.58 watts per bug. Hmm, okay. So if I move this one over here, just to the right a little bit, hmm, jumps up to 7.77. Interesting. Okay, so I shifted the right one in so that these are overlapping just a little bit more. Hmm, and once again, we see that the efficiency improved there. So we're up to 7.95 again, which is kind of like normal. Okay, I can't move this shine bug any closer at this point but I can move the one over here to the left just a little bit. So when we get three shine bugs close to each other, just like this, ooh, what, what do we get there? Hmm, interesting. How about that? It's only 7.95. So it's a f more efficient to have the bugs in two spots that are close to each other than it is to have three bugs spread out, but still kind of close to each other. Unless it was an error. Let me go ahead and try to recreate this. I have one bug over here in the left, one bug on the right. This is seven watts, not 7.5. And this is 8.9. Oh, so then it is 7.95. Okay, so so once I set it up a second time, it looks like it is not as efficient. So 7.95 per shine bug is what you should be aiming for. That's all right, and that's why we do testing. So as far as my testing has shown thus far, this is probably an ideal setup. So if you offset it one from the middle of where the power is towards the other one, 
that's right next to it, you'll get up to that 7.95 watts per shine bug. So that means up here, this could be slightly more efficient if I moved all of this stuff one tile over. Although, that's kind of daunting at this point. How many shine nymphs do I have in that spot? Oh, it's generating 179 watts. All right, I'll do it for science. I'll suffer for your sake. Let's go ahead and move this stuff one, one little tile over. Okay, everything just move one tile over. Oh my gosh, there is so much stuff in one spot. Steel, okay, you can move. I can't, I can't see. I think I moved it all. <laughs> Unless you, did I miss anything, guys? Did I? <laughs> oh my gosh. Ugh. Okay, so it was 177 watts before. I moved everything one little tile. Well, okay, maybe it wasn't that much. But I moved this over there. Boom! 193 now. <laughs> it's only been 11 cycles, and we're generating a like a consistent 350 watts here. Oh, and by the way, it looks like wild shine bugs down here do the exact same thing. Look at that. They gave off an egg. There's three eggs right there and three shine bugs. So this shine bug right here, you can see that it will it'll produce an egg here pretty soon and there we'll have it. Anybody want to guess the lux? I'm going to go with 50,000. Price is right. What do we got here? Ooh, 57,600. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this one over here on the right because I just don't think it's needed anymore. It doesn't seem to get used that much. Look at all the eggshell down here too. It's not like it's a whole lot really, but you know, give it give it enough cycles that that'll add up. And it's pretty much unlimited too, so that ain't bad. Woo woo! Welcome ladies and gentlemen to Woo Woo! That's the sound Whoa, whoa! That's the sound of unlimited free energy! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Sunbug Sun 2.0. Whoa, whoa! That is the sound of unlimited free energy! Today, we're gonna turn shine bugs into a sun and convert it into power. This is tart. This is design 2.0. Darn it. Let's get it right. Whoa, whoa! That's the sound of unlimited free energy. Welcome to Shine Bug Sun 2.0. Today we're going to cover how to capture a shine bug and then boom, 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 so much power. All right, you know what we need now? We need a Lux sensor. We need something to determine when we've reached the maximum output of this solar panel down here so that we can actually route it to the next storage unit. So once we hit 400 watts here, we move it over here, and then we move it over there, and we can just infinitely scale the power forever. I'm sure there's a mod out there that would do something like that. I think I've seen a power mod that kind of shows how many watts are generated. So maybe, maybe I can implement that. Hmm. <laughs> it's a new day and I've had some new thoughts here. I did let this experiment run for a good long time before I got distracted by playing some auto chess. So here's the thing. Remember in the last video how I got the most power once I put all the shine bugs like right in between the solar panels? What happens if we do that same arrangement here? So two solar panels just like this. And then I put the window tiles right here. Yeah, something like that. Let's see what happens. Boom. All right, how much power is that? 3.82 on both sides. So unfortunately, that's only 7.64, so it's not quite as efficient as the arrangement that was above it. Let's go ahead and try to move it up, though, and see what happens. Nope. No change, and it just dropped. Okay, so that arrangement there was less efficient. Okay, so when we look at this arrangement and we want to scale it up, I could see having two solar panels right here, and then you can kind of see that this is the space. Okay, so what's the space for this arrangement? Well, it's nine tall by 14 wide. So if you take that volume of space and you were to like just stack them on top of each other, you can generate a lot of power in a relatively small amount of space. Considering that it's not only, not only does it work, it continues to replenish itself just infinitely, you know, until they make a change to it or something. But if you look at the light right here, yeah, it, it stops right at the edge of this solar panel. So it's like, it's like perfect. Now I let this run for a while, and unfortunately I, I had some, I think the shine bugs died off. The reason they died off, I think they all spawned at the same time, so the eggs were gone by the time that they 
they came back. Now we can see that this arrangement down here, I don't, I have no idea how many shine nymphs are in there, but it was able to get up to 286 watts. Now, is that the limit for some odd reason? Or can it go even higher? Yeah, it can keep going higher and higher and higher, so we can max this out. Okay, so the maximum, the maximum amount of power that we can get out of a solar panel is 380 watts. So when you do the math there, what you find out is you need about 48 shine bugs per spot. So you might as well just round it up to a cool 100. And once you have 100 shine bugs with 50 in each spot right there, boom, you're pretty much set. These solar panels will just keep kicking out their maximum power day after day. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Here's the other trick that we need to do. Rather than put this right here, what you want to do is put that behind a door. Okay, so by hiding the loader right behind the door, we can actually maintain a, a population of eggs down there if we have less shine bugs. So if I were to just move one of those down there, um, what we should be able to do is keep at least a couple eggs hanging around. That way we always end up with a, you know, a fresh supply of shine bugs up top. It's the exact same thing we're doing over here with the Paku and the fry egg down here as well. You see how there's two of them, and what this is set to is two. So if it were to go above that, then we'd sweep the eggs up and, and move them on. But since the cycle of this fish right here is that it will give off one more egg right now, then we have two eggs down below. Those get shipped out, but then we it produces one more egg before it dies. That egg then stays down here because it's less than the critter sensor. So maybe you set up arrangements, you know, seed farms like this for your different shine bugs for each one, or maybe we just throw a bunch of them up here and just populate it really, really fast, just like we did here. In 20 cycles or so, I had a decent amount of power, but now you can see I have a fairly enormous amount of power. The amount of phosphorite these shine bugs consume is actually kind of small. It's not like a big deal. The other thing that might help here is if we were to arrange this more vertical rather than horizontal, that way one sweeper could cover the entire, you know, bottom. And that way you still get the volume that you need in order to keep many of them happy. Yeah, you see this egg right here? It's just going to hang out and it isn't getting swept up. So in the without the doors, this egg would be picked up and it would be stored over here in the loader. So yes, I think this was a really cool experiment and I'm definitely going to be setting this up in my super duplicate mega base. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. As always, stay awesome guys. Peace. Brothgar out.